What's up spoilers? Welcome to the spoilers and welcome to another spoiler of spoilers. Okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> this is just a warning that there are spoilers for this story in this video. Um, so if you haven't read it, I suggest going to listen to my audiobooks before you come back to this video uh, and, and watch it. Anyway, if you're ready, let's proceed. What's up Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another episode of Stomp Stomp. I'm a thwomp. As you guessed, today we're talking about the story in the Fazbear Frights books that has probably the most horrifying ending of all of them. Yeah, someone turned to metal, someone else got cooked in an oven, and someone tried to get rid of their shadow and end up trying to kill themselves. When you put it that way, yeah, Hide and Seek is a bit of a weird story. In my opinion, this ending is one of the most spine chilling so far. Uh, which is weird because the story doesn't really do much, um, it, it doesn't really explore much, it's, it's a very regular story. The ending isn't that surprising, uh, it's just the innocence of the kids um, <laughs> who don't know that they're killing the selfish teenager by stomping on the, by playing the game essentially. Oh, and if this is the first time that you're hearing the ending to this story, don't worry. I'll explain. <laughs> but before I do explain, make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, or I'll jump on your grandmother's flowers and make her pay for it. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, but just subscribe to be safe. Um, you never know what could happen. I'm extremely close to that 10k and would love to get there at the end of this month. Anyway, Let's continue with the video. So this story is all about Colton, who is a teenager that gets given money to go to Freddy's every week. His dream is to get enough tickets to get an expensive games console because he is a pro gamer and pro gamers make pro gamer moves. He meets his little cousin Aiden uh, on his birthday at Freddy's who introduces him to a game called Jump for Tickets. Um, in this game, children obviously jump <laughs> up and down on the ticket pulverizer and then tickets fall from the ceiling. Um, but Colton notices it's actually rigged to give smaller children more tickets. Colton was then like, I'm gonna sneak into Freddy's after and screw the game, screw with the game, so that it gives me and people like me more tickets. But when he tries to make the game more beneficial to him, it actually makes it worse, um, <laughs> and his life slowly falls to pieces as he doesn't interact with his family as much, and his grades are going down, stuff like that, um, just because of him in trying to get his goal. Now you can already see that this dude requires the Fazbear treatment. <laughs> he's a douchebag, he's an angsty teen, and he's a pro gamer who deserves death. Is that a bit far? Okay. Remember the moral of this story is, uh, do well in school? Dunno. know. One day Colton enters the pizzeria before it opens and something strange happens. The presenter of the game is a clown called Coils uh, and he follows Colton before standing in front of the pulverizer. Uh, it turns out that Coils isn't evil as I first thought but instead he's trying to protect Colton. Uh, instead he pushes the clown out of the way and closes the hatch behind him that leaves him stuck underneath the ticket pulverizer, and you can probably guess what happens next. Freddy's opens, the kids start playing the game, uh, they jump on the game, and they realize it's not going down as far as usual. When the manager looks at the machine, he hears a liquidy noise, and it's very clear that the children squashed Colton to death. That's a chilling ending to otherwise quite a boring story. Don't get me wrong, this story was amazing, and by no means was it boring to read. But the plot just starts out a little bit plain. Now, we were talking about hide and seek before. I feel like the two stories are, are very similar, but this was the superior one. The, the one with all the children stomping on a guy. Do you agree with that? The other thing I liked in this story was the incredible names for the other games in the pizzeria. BB's Ball Drop and DD's Fishing Hole. No, I don't want to hear about Balloon Boy's balls dropping or DD's Fishy Hole. I want to know if these are innuendos on purpose or if it was an accidental. Either way, my god, writers. <laughs> That's one way to get me invested into a story. Okay, back to what I was saying about this story being plain. Uh, I feel like a lot of this story doesn't actually have much to theorize about. Uh, it's a very simple story about a gamer who gets frustrated by an arcade game, tries to mess with it, then receives the consequences. It's as simple as that. Much like a lot of the other stories, it's one where the main character gets what he deserves. 
There is one part of this story that we can talk about, however, and that is Coils the Clown. Before we talk about him, let me finish off the final part of this story. An out of order sign is placed on the machine and Coils changes his face from a huge grin to a frown with teardrops. The cousin Aiden comes by, tells Coils not to be sad uh, and tells him that he was saving up tickets to buy something for Colton. Yes, that twist was actually heartbreaking for me. <laughs> Colton was being horrible to his cousin but it turns out he was saving his tickets for him to buy the thing he wanted all along. It was a bit late though. Let's not focus on the Aiden bit though. What the hell happened to Coils? A happy robot clown turned into a sad crying clown when Colton died. But why? I didn't even know he could do that. Like, how is a robot able to cry? Well, it's not. What if Colton actually possessed the robot uh, at the moment he died. The change in facial expression could be the representation of the possession. There are a lot of long words in that. And yes, I actually believe this is what happened. Uh, right at the end, Coils and Aiden actually hugged, and I think assuming that Coils is Colton, it just makes the story a little bit more emotional. But also, if there was no possession in this story, what would be the point in Coils? It just makes sense that in this FNAF book, it ends with a possession. Yes, don't forget it's a FNAF book. I do have another question for you though. Who does Coils actually represent? There must be a parallel here, and I think I have some options as to who this could be. First of all, remember that random clown that appeared in FNAF 6, then never came back again? What if it's him? Remember, this is just a kid's drawing of a real animatronic that we've never seen before, and while I like this theory and how it gives that random clown some kind of purpose, um, I don't think it needs it. <laughs> Firstly, he looks kind of scary, and I think Coils is a very protective and innocent robot rather than a possessed or cursed one. But also, it's just the fact that we've never seen this clown IRL before. Um, it very well could have been an old animatronic, and I think it probably was, but it's very different to all of the others and could just be a kid's drawing of a clown rather than an actual, an actual animatronic in the restaurant. Instead, I think that a lot of the theorists I have interacted with have uh, better ideas. Coils the Clown is none other than Ennard, but not as we know him. If you recall Sister Location, Ennard is an animatronic that's made up of all of the fun times. His body is made of parts of other bodies and his eyes has everybody else's eye colours. However, one thing that he does have that wasn't taken from any of the other fun times was his mask. This mask must have come from somewhere, so we are assuming that there was another fun time animatronic we never saw with this mask. People just say it's an old Ennard, but I guess now we could call it Coils the Clown. Why? Well, the description of Coils matches the mask perfectly. Its lanky body was dressed in a lemon and lime coloured striped costume that was decorated with little jingly bells. Quote. Now, let's look at Ennard. In general, he seems like he would have quite a lanky body. I mean, the real Ennard is quite a lanky robot. Uh, but your little jingly bell should be ringing here because of the detail lemon and lime coloured stripes. Lemon and lime is yellow and green, just like the striped hat that Ennard's mask holds. That, for me, was the point at which I said, yeah, you know what, I believe this. And if you don't believe it, it's completely fine, because this is all speculation, and to be honest, doesn't really matter that much to the FNAF lore. Like, if, if it was actually a previous version of Ennard, what would this mean for parallels and stuff? Um, I don't know, may maybe like Colton represents Michael, um, uh, I don't know, tell me guys what you think. I personally think that this story isn't one that is supposed to be thought about all that much, instead we leave all the talking for the other two stories that I've already made videos on that you can go and watch. Anyway, thank you for watching, uh, make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video, uh, next time we're going to be talking about the big one, yes, the Stitch Wraith story of this book. I can't wait. This one is incredible, so 
yeah, just subscribe for that. <laughs> anyway, see you then. Goodbye.